Good morning. Welcome to our devotion on uh, Thursday morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right. Today is July 21st. That is the day that we commemorate the prophet Ezekiel from the Old Testament. And we'll read a little bit about Ezekiel. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ezekiel, the son of Buzai, was a priest called by God to be a prophet to the exiles during the Babylonian captivity. In 597 BC, King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonian army brought the king of Judah and thousands of the best citizens of Jerusalem, including Ezekiel, to Babylon. Ezekiel's priestly background profoundly stamped his prophecy as the holiness of God and temple figure prominently in his messages. For example, Ezekiel 9 and 10 and Ezekiel 40 to 48. We'll read a little bit from Ezekiel. Well, we'll read all of Ezekiel 10 momentarily. From 900, excuse me, from 593 BC to the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 586 BC, Ezekiel prophesied the inevitability of divine judgment on Jerusalem, on the exiles in Babylon, and on seven nations that surround Israel. Jerusalem would fall, and the exiles would not quickly return as a just consequence of their sin. Once word reached Ezekiel that Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed, his message then became one of comfort and hope. Through him, God promised that his people would experience future restoration, renewal, and revival in the coming messianic kingdom. You'll find that message in Ezekiel th chapters 33 through 48. Much of the strange symbolism of Ezekiel's prophecies was later employed also in the revelation of St. John in the New Testament. So, as I said, we'll look at chapter 10 of Ezekiel which deals with the holiness of God in the temple and God leaving the temple as a sign of his judgment on the people. We'll also read from Ezekiel 34, part of that message of restoration and hope. And so we'll start with Ezekiel chapter 10. Then I looked and behold, on the expanse that was over the heads of the cherubim, there appeared above them something like a sapphire in appearance like a throne. And he said to the man clothed in linen, Go in among the whirling wheels underneath the cherubim. Fill your hands with burning coals from between the cherubim and scatter them over the city. And he went in before my eyes. Now the cherubim were standing on the south side of the house when the man went in, and a cloud filled the inner court. And the glory of the Lord went up from the cherub to the threshold of the house. And the house was filled with the cloud and the court was filled with the brightness of the glory of the Lord. And the sound of the wings of the cherubim was heard as far as the outer court, like the voice of God Almighty when he speaks. And when he commanded the man clothed in linen, take fire from between the whirling wheels, from between the cherubim, he went in and stood beside a wheel. And a cherub stretched out his hand from between the cherubim to the fire that was between the cherubim, and took some of it, and put it into the hands of the man clothed in linen, who took it and went out. The cherubim appeared to have the form of a human hand under their wings. And I looked, and behold, there were four wheels beside the cherubim, one beside each cherub, and the appearance of the wheels was like sparkling barrel. And as for their appearance, the four had the same likeness, as if a wheel were within a wheel. When they went, they went in any of their four directions without turning as they went. But in whatever direction the front wheel faced, the others followed without turning as they went. And their whole body, their rims and their spokes, their wings and the wheels were full of eyes all around. The wheels that the four of them had. As for the wheels, they were called in my hearing the whirling wheels. 
and everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of the cherub, and the second face was a human face, and the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. And the cherubim mounted up. These were the living creatures that I saw by the Kibar Canal. And when the cherubim went, the wheels went beside them. And when the cherubim lifted up their wings to mount up from the earth, the wheels did not turn from beside them. When they stood still, these stood still. And when they mounted up, these mounted up with them, where the spirit of the living creatures was in them. Then the glory of the Lord went out from the threshold of the house and stood over the cherubim. And the cherubim lifted up their wings and mounted up from the earth before my eyes as they went out with the wheels beside them. And they stood at the entrance of the east gate of the house of the Lord. And the glory of the God of Israel was over them. These were the living creatures that I saw underneath the God of Israel by the Kibar Canal. And I knew that they were cherubim. Each had four faces and each four wings and underneath their wings, the likeness of human hands. And as for the likeness of their faces, they were the same faces whose appearance I had seen by the Kibar Canal. Each one of them went straight forward. So that's Ezekiel chapter 10. You see the focus on the temple and the, the cherubim, these kind of ridiculous sounding angels. The way they're described is, is hard to imagine with all the eyes and the four faces. A lot of things we don't really understand in this chapter. It's, it's very, um, I, I think you could say this is apocalyptic literature, much like Revelation, um, visions that the Lord allowed Ezekiel to see. But then I want to focus too on, as I said, Ezekiel 34, we'll just read verses 25 to 31. This is a message of restoration and of hope. God says, I will make with them a covenant of peace and banish wild beasts from the land so that they may dwell securely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the places all around my hill a blessing. And I will send down the showers in their season. They shall be showers of blessing. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit and the earth shall yield its increase and they shall be secure in their, in their land. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I break the bars of their yoke and deliver them from the hand of those who enslaved them, they shall no more be a prey to the nations, nor shall the beasts of the land devour them. They shall dwell securely, and none shall make them afraid. And I will provide for them renowned plantations, so that they shall no more be consumed with hunger in the land, and no longer suffer the reproach of the nations. And they shall know that I am the Lord, their God, with them. And that they, the house of Israel, are my people, declares the Lord God. And you are my sheep, human sheep of my pasture. And I am your God, declares the Lord God. So Ezekiel 34, 25 to 31. And let us pray. Almighty God. Merciful Father, who created and completed all things. On this day, when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And then we also pray together. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you once again for joining us and blessings from the Lord on your day. Thank you and to you as well, Pastor.